We're back here at the NRA National Farms Museum, deep, I would say, filled with inside the Roosevelt Room in, in what is, this is the Oval Office of the Summer White House of Theodore Roosevelt. It's part of the Theodore Roosevelt's Trappings of an Icon exhibit. And, and Phil, I'm just overwhelmed because I'm feeling like I'm taking a step back in inside history to be in here. Tell us about this wonderful exhibit in this wonderful room. Well, John, we're actually technically in the Beretta Gallery of the uh, National Firearms Museum. And uh, the, uh, the Beretta Gallery has been long known as the Theodore Roosevelt Room right. Gallery. Uh, because back in 93, before there was a museum, before there was an NRA headquarters sign out front, we went to design the, uh, the museum based on the footprint we would have for the building. And uh, we went to Sagamore Hill. Uh, we photographed the whole house. We figured the library was the most evocative of the man's spirit and aura. So we came back here. We tried to design something on a one-to-one -one scale. Uh, it's, it's pretty close. Uh, we got a lot of the elements down, uh, and we opened to the public in 98. You know, that was 14 years ago, and here we are, the uh, very proud uh, recipients of the actual furnishings from that original room that we looked upon wow. 19 years ago. They've actually let us borrow everything from that room that we needed to actually complete our little room. So that's amazing. Here you actually have the uh, the Oval Office of the Summer White House from 1902 to 1908. And that is the desk, the chair. It's the desk, the chair, the blotter, the uh, pen and ink stand. Um, you know, the Oval Office actually didn't become the Oval Office until uh, Howard Ta William Howard Taft in 1909. Mm -hmm. uh, Roosevelt's office was in what they call the Roosevelt Room now at right, the White House. Right, okay. But this served uh, as his, because of the extreme Washington humidity, of which we are all more than accustomed yes, thank and, you. and familiar with. Um, some of the items, uh, very special. This was given to Roosevelt, this Lincoln uh, Inkwell, uh, by the Hamilton Club of Chicago in 1899. Mm. Um, the, uh, the sterling silver uh, uh, candlestick, um, this candlestick actually held the candle uh, that windlet uh, was used to drip the seal that sealed the Portsmouth Treaty of 1905, oh ending the Russo-Japanese War. Jeez. This was from the, uh, the officer's mess of the USS Mayflower, and uh, that Portsmouth Treaty ended the Russo-Japanese War. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt had set the whole treaty negotiation thing up. Uh, this candlestick was used to seal that treaty. Roosevelt became, as a result, the first American to ever earn the Nobel Peace Prize oh, for his yes. efforts. And that's from the Mayflower. And that's from the USS Mayflower, oh, USA, a battle yeah. cruiser. Wow. Uh, that was Roosevelt's uh, a kind of the presidential yacht. Uh, we've that got is a cool elephant feet. Well, that's a, a rhino. <laughs> oh, it's a rhino. That, that, that's actually a. Uh, an inkwell, Ooh, yes. and uh, <laughs> and and then over here is a, a hippo foot. Uh, no part of the animal uh, on the 1910 safari went unused. Well, that's right. The elephant foot we saw before was a trash can. That's right there. Yes, there it is. Okay. And, uh, and those really neat gloves. Tell us about those. Those are bearskin gloves, uh, possibly taken during his uh, famous bear hunt of old Ephraim back in uh, 1885. Uh, there's also a, a massive bear paw here on the wall uh, that was from a, a, a bear hunt in Louisiana in 1905. So uh, there, there's all kinds of, of reminiscences of, of the, uh, the years both as a hunter, statesman, and a soldier. The original hand-painted silk flag of the 1st U.S. Volunteer Cavalry, the Rough Riders. John, on the 8th of January, 1919, uh, President's, uh, President Roosevelt's coffin lay in state at, uh, at the church there in Oyster Bay. Uh, there was not an American flag covering his coffin, as is traditional with all uh, soldiers and, and chiefs of state. The Rough Rider flag you see behind me, John, was the flag that covered his coffin during that wow. funeral. And, and, and literally, this place is so full of history. You, you can just feel when you come in here. It's, well, Phil, it's, it's been an honor. Well, before we go, though, can we flip around for one second? Sure. And talk about that small firearm over there. Right. That's the, uh, that's the uh, Gatling gun. 
It's one of four Gatling guns uh, that Lieutenant John Parker received from, uh, from Colonel John T. Thompson uh, of the Ordnance Department. Colonel Thompson would later uh, become famous for the Tommy Thompson, gun. Right. But in 1898, he was Chief of Ordnance. And uh, he uh, offered uh, Cap or Lieutenant Parker four Gatling guns. He organized them as a separate detachment, working somewhat independently. And they supported the, uh, the charge of the United States Infantry and Cavalry up San Juan Hill on uh, July 1st, 1898. That's how, you lay, that's how you lay down covering fire. That was the first time that was ever used for that type of thing. Wow. What a wonderful display. What a wonderful room. Phil, people need to get here and see this while it's here. It's a limited engagement. Bar, the, the, these things are on loan from Sagamore Hill. How can they come and see all these wonderful treasures? They can come visit us uh, by taking the interstate to exit 57A off of or out 66 here in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, we're open seven days a week. Plenty of free parking, uh, free admission to the museum. Uh, if you can't make it to the uh, museum off the interstate, visit us on the internet. That's seven days a week at nramuseum.com. Well, Phil, once again, I, I don't know how you do it every time, but man, I just love coming and doing these segments because this is a treat for me to be able to come and see this history. I'm, I, I'm truly, for me, it's I'm pretty speechless right now. So I'm going to take it all in and, and, and we're going to go away. But thank you, Phil, for another wonderful segment the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John, for having us again.